like to welcome you to Youth Sunday at New Beginning Church. We are here to praise the Lord. Lord. Hello, everyone. I am Alexander, and I would like to welcome you to Youth Sunday at New Beginning Church. We are here to praise the Lord because God has been good to each of us. Join us as we sing, I just want to praise you and bless the Lord.
scripture for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, um, one, chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am afraid with you to, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Repeat after me. Greater is he, Greater is he that is in me, that is in me than he, than he that is in the world. That is in the world. I can do all things. I can, I can do, do all things, things through Christ. Through, through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. La escritura para hoy viene de Jeremías a capítulo 1, versículos 4 a 9. Vino pues palabra de Jehová a mí diciendo, Antes que te formaste en el vientre te conocí, y antes que naciste te santifiqué. Te di por profeta a las naciones. Entonces dije yo, Ah, ah Señor Jehová, he aquí no sé hablar, porque soy un muchacho. Y me dijo Jehová, No digas, soy un muchacho, porque a todo lo que te envié irás todo lo que te mande no tengas miedo de ellos porque estoy contigo para librarte dice Jehová y extendió Jehová su, a su mano su mano y tocó mi boca y me dijo Jehová he aquí he puesto mis palabras en tu boca después viene después de mí mayor es él mayor es él que está en mí que está en mí que él que él que está en el mundo que está en el mundo no lo puedo todo no lo puedo en Cristo Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for the food you chose one. Thank you for waking us up this morning and making a brand new day. Lord, let's thank you for letting us all come together to worship you in one voice and one. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for letting us see another day in, in peace, Lord. We just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Señor, Gracias por este día. Gracias por todo lo que has hecho. Por favor, bendice esta iglesia y dejanos tener un buen servicio. Gracias por dejarnos viajar y a salvo aquí en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. We need your power, Lord, come by. Zahon Ensemble will perform the Chichado. This selection will be played in a two-part canon. Both soprano and, and alto xylophone will play the melody. Then the altos will break away and sopranos after two measures. See if you can recognize the two-part canon. And now the shadow. Thank you. 
At this time, I would like to introduce Brother and Sister Whitlock. They will bring our educational moment for today. All right, well, good morning, church family. Again, we are the Whitlocks. Of course, you all already knew that. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. And again, we are the Whitlocks. <laughs> next slide, please. So we have a huge problem today. What is the problem? Well, some say that College and school is not for everyone, but we know that this statement is completely false. Who has this problem? The uneducated has this problem. Now, why should we solve this problem? Because it stops people from reaching their full potential. It also stops people uh, from supporting themselves and from supporting their families. Next slide, please. But there are some workable solutions to this problem. The first solution, which is the most common, is college. Getting a college degree. This includes the associate's degree, bachelor's, and doctorate degrees. These range from two years to four years to six plus years. The second solution is trade school or vocational school. It's learning a skill that involves working with your hands such as construction, mechanic, electrician, or plumber. The list goes on and on. And the third solution is joining the military. This includes the Air Force, the Navy, Marines, the Army, the National Guard. They will train you. They will, they will help you learn a skill when you get there. Next slide, please. All right. So young people, you've always heard us say, get a higher education, get a degree. Well, now we have some facts, and I think you'll like this one. This chart shows the uh, gap in the annual wages between a high school degree, high school diploma, and a bachelor's degree. Now, on our chart, they collected uh, this data from 1990 to 2023, so that was last year. And if you look at that bottom green line, that is a high school diploma. It has been trending down. That means it has been losing its value year after year. And today, the average annual income for somebody with a high school diploma is about $36,000. However, if you look at that top line, that is a bachelor's degree. That is the higher education. If you look at that line, that line has been trending up over the years. That means the, the bachelor's degree, the college degree, has been gaining value over the years. And if you look at the uh, annual income for that, the average is $60,000. What that means is, is that even just a bachelor's degree will gain, will, will get you almost twice as much money as a high school diploma. Now, I know we all like money. <laughs> that's, that's, this is a real good reason on why you should go after a higher education, a college degree. Next slide, please. You know, everybody's on the internet. They're like, I can be an Instagram influencer. Well, you can, but can you take care of yourself with that money? So the bars on the far right, So what that means is I work with 
Taylor developer, we're excited here. But this experiment of the space, trying to make sure that they're able to send it on the vehicle, get up there and get in the International Space Station, and make sure it doesn't hurt other experiments before the astronauts that are doing the experiment. But one thing um, my degree has helped me to do is work in this industry. I've worked with, with NASA doing the International Space Station, I've worked with aircraft, and I've also worked in missile defense. So open the doors of places you can actually work. Another note about getting your master's degree. Once you get your master's degree, a lot of times when you work for a company, they will pay you to get your master's. So I didn't even have to pay for my master's degree. My company paid for it for me. So that's the good thing about being able to further your education once you get that job where they actually do pay. And again, I am Kevin Whitlock. So I too received my bachelor's of science uh, in electrical engineering from Southern, Southern University <laughs> in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's you. <laughs> um, currently I am an electrical engineer with the Boeing company. The first half of my career, I worked uh, on military aircraft. So I helped to design uh, wire harnesses. This is the electrical wiring that runs all throughout the aircraft. I helped to design that. And so currently, I too am working on the International Space Station. So I'm with a group uh, who works for, uh, on the electrical power system of the International Space Station, as well as we work on uh, the power equipment. This is the equipment that, that keeps the International Space Station powered. And so how I help to do that is I, uh, I create and maintain the engineering drawings that run that equipment. So anytime they need to go solve a problem or anything like that, they refer back to those engineering drawings. And so that uh, higher education has helped me not only to work on different things such as the, the International Space Station, but also, guess what? More money. <laughs> Next slide, please. So you don't hear us always talk about the International Space Station. Well, this is a picture of the ISS as it orbits around the Earth. Yes, the ISS is real. All right, next slide. So in summary, you want to obtain something stable first. You want to be able to have a consistent paycheck, something that you can take care of yourself and then pursue your other dreams. And then you always want to have something to fall back on. You always want a secondary skill or something. In case the first thing doesn't work out, then you have another skill that you can fall back on. And beware of the get rich quick scheme. A lot of times they're scams. So you always have to do your research first. And just remember that education, higher education, opens lots of doors. But it also opens lots of opportunities. And lastly, spread your wings and soar. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I tell you, I had no idea as to what the Whitlocks did every day. Now, they left out one important message. They didn't tell us the starting salary for an engineer. But from the way that they talk, I, it just talk like they just way out there, okay? So boys and girls, let me tell y'all something. You're better, come on up, you can start coming up. Get an education, get an education. Don't stop at your high school diploma. Go to college, get that bachelor's degree, get that master's degree, and get the doctorate degree. All right, thank you, uh, Whitlocks. This month, we have been emphasizing the importance of education. At this time, we will sing the song, I Can Be. This song let us know that with an education, we can be whatever we want to be. All we have to do is get an education. We can be what we want to be and set ourselves free. We will sing, I Can Be. Change, I have to 
for who he is and what he has already done. I want to thank God for our youth and our young people. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's thank God for the, the young Whitlocks and, and uh, thank God for, for who he is and what he has already done. Every now and then we need to bring some examples before our youth and our young people so they can see that they can. And if you have come to the conclusion that you can't or that you will, you are. You will or you will not based on what conclusion you have come to. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's look at uh, Daniel chapter 6. Daniel in the Old Testament, the book is Daniel the chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, verses 21 through 23 is where we will land today. Daniel chapter 6, verses 21 through 23. I want to remind you this morning we serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has, he has blessed us one more again to come to this house to give him honor and to give him praise. Daniel chapter 6, verses 21 through 23, when you found it, you will discover these words. Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the lion den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed God. I want to talk about believe in your God. Believe in your God. As we have for the last three to four weeks gone through this book of Daniel, we began by saying to you that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken four Hebrews from their country and when he took the Hebrews from their country, then he began to change their names. I say to you today that your name is important. You don't see people naming their children Satan. You don't hear of people naming their children devil. They may call them that later, but they don't name them that. You don't hear of stable people naming their girl Jezebel. There's a Jezebel's Table restaurant in town. And I said to a pastor the other day, we can't go to that restaurant. Then we will be eating at Jezebel's Table. Now, of course, we don't have people that name their children Mark, Luke, and John anymore either. Sister Johnson is stuff like Shaquita, Kiwanwa, and stuff that children learn how to spell once they get to fifth grade. But there's something that's valuable about your name. Your name speaks to your character. Your name tell people who you really are. Your name means something to you and it means something to somebody else. Have you ever looked up your name? What does your name mean? If you look up your name, you can tell what your parents were going through at the time they were going through it. There's stuff out, stuff out there like Hennessy. That's her name. Alize. Even Walker Red and Jack Black. Your name tells you what your parents were going through when they named you. So the first thing the world 
Pharaoh will do, as King Nebuchadnezzar did, was change their names. Because your name is powerful. He changed their names. The other thing he did, he tried to change their food. You are what you eat. If you eat all meat, they call you a meathead. You are what you eat. What you look like depends sometimes on what you eat. What you eat makes a difference. So he changed their diet, but they were, he was unsuccessful with them. The devil always want to change your name and change what you eat. Then he changed their music. Let me tell you, when I grew up, music was real music. When I grew up, I, the Isley brothers spoke with clarity. When I grew up and I drove with my eight-track tape in the deck, I, I could really hear what the Manhattans were saying. When I grew up, Teddy Pendergrass and, and uh, all of those who sung those songs, they meant something. And don't mention Barry White. He would get you places that you wish you hadn't gone. <laughs> because music, Brother Irvin, was music. You understood it. You danced to it. And your mama approved to some of it. So he changed their music. The music is a common language among all tongues in all nations. If you don't even know the words, you can pat your feet to the music. You can snap your finger and clap your hands to the music. That's why I don't understand on Sunday morning how we can be so quiet when the music is playing because music is a common thread and a common language to all of us. So the devil wants to change your music. The devil has even changed our music in these great United States of America, where some of the greatest, art of, the greatest artists are singing up under a woman's clothes, where the most, most profitable artists are those who, who can tell you way more than taking and shaking your old tail feather. It's the music that gets people's blood moving. So be, well, be careful of your type of music. The next thing he changed was they worship, their worship. He, he changed their worship. And anytime you go anywhere else in a foreign country, you can look forward to your worship being changed. So they cha he changed their names. He changed their food. He changed their diet. He changed their music. And he changed your worship. I want to say to you, regardless of where you go, regardless of where you attend, regardless of what meeting you're in, don't let anybody change your worship. When you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you find the king says, when the music is played, you bow down and you worship this statue. Let me tell you, statues have hands, but they can't touch. Statues have feet, but they can't walk. Statues may even have a heart, but it cannot feel the infirmities of us. When you bow down to a statue, you are bowing down to an idol God. If you bow down to anything other than the God of the Bible, other than the God who, whose son is Jesus, other than Jehovah God, other than Yahweh God, you are bowing down to the wrong. Some people are missing in the sanctuary this morning because they bow down to the, the God of Lexus. They bow down to the God of GMC. They, they bow down to the God of a brand new house. They, they bow down to stuff that really can't help them. I say to you today, don't bow down to anybody other than the great I am God. The God who can bless you and the God who can the three Hebrew boys refused to bow down. 
King Nebuchadnezzar lit the fire, and when he lit the fire, it was seven times hotter than before. But the Bible says when he went to get the three who brought three boys out, when he went to look in, the Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth man walking around in the fire with them, and they looked like the son. He looked like the son of God. Let me tell you, God will get in the fire with you. Jesus will come to your rescue. He will get in the fire with you if you just obey God. We move to chapter 6, we find Daniel, the fourth of the Hebrew boys. Daniel had a routine. His routine was to bow down before the Almighty God in prayer three times a day. Have you prayed just once today? Have you bowed before God just once a day? Have you come to the conclusion that God is worthy of bowing down to? first point today, when I look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, is found in, in verse number, number 10 and 11. Daniel prayed three times a day, so we must have a prayerful life. Our lives ought to be filled with prayer. Our lives ought to be talking to God. Our lives ought to be filled with us communicating with God and allowing God to communicate with us simply because when we pray and we talk to God, God is able to lead us, direct us, and protect us. The God we serve is a God that keeps his eyes open on our behalf. When we pray, things happen. When we go before God, we ought to have a lifestyle of prayer. We ought not pray at night only. We ought not pray in the morning only. We ought not pray when we're in trouble only. We ought to have a prayerful life in a prayerful lifestyle. We ought to call on God in good times. Call on God in bad times. Call on God when things are going well. I mean, we got, it, we got it going on in the great United States of America, regardless of who's the next president. We live at our worst. We live better than people in other nations. We're able to show up in worship when we get ready. I was standing in, in Czech Republic, and I was up preaching, and, and my interpreter was going at it, and we were right in the middle of the service, and two guys walks in the door with military clothes on. My interpreter looks at me and he stopped speaking Czech. He said, you got to stop. He spoke English and he said, you have to stop. Room is packed with people. People stand inside the wall. No chairs in front of me. People are packed in the building. Almost 1,500 people just packed in there. And two men walks in in military clothing. My interpreter said, you got to stop. So he asked some questions, he spoke check, and then they walked out. I said, what's going on? Because you know we're about 5,000 miles from home now. And he said to me, he said, he just wanted to make sure that he knew whose car was parked outside. In check, folk ride to church on bicycles. There were about 1,500 bicycles parked outside so they could get to church. We got cars in the great United States of America. We can drive where we want to drive. We can worship where we want to worship. We can go where we want to go, but we still don't show. We ought to have a prayerful life. Daniel had a prayerful life. He prayed on a regular basis. King, the king put out a decree that anybody got get caught praying going to be put to the line. Let me tell you, the king didn't just come up with this on his own. You know, even in your worship, you got some haters. Even in your worship, you got folk watching you and don't appreciate what you're doing. Even in the midst of you holding your holy hands up to God, even in the midst of you bowing down before the awesome God, somebody will not like it. So they went to the king and said, King, there's old Daniel. He, he is praying three times a day. And I tell you what you ought to do, king. You ought to put forth a decree where nobody should be called praying. Daniel hears about it. 
the news is told to him that the king has a decree out and Daniel and no one else should be caught praying. The moment Daniel heard it, guess what Daniel did? He went back to his house, got in the window, bowed down before God. And just as he had done before, he bowed down and prayed. In the midst of a death decree, in the midst of being thrown to the lions, he knew that he needed a prayer for life. Let me tell you, if we haven't prayed before, we need to have prayer for lives right now. If we've never, if we've never called on God before, we need to call on God right now. The climate that we live in is a treacherous climate, and we got to call on God. No politician can fix it. No doctor can fix it. Only Jesus can fix it. We need to bow down and call on Jesus. So we ought to have a prayer for life. My second point is we ought to have a pure heart. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says that in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. We've been wondering what is God's will for our lives. God's will for our lives is that we give thanks in everything we go through. No, I can't just say, God, thank you for taking me through the trouble. But while I'm in the midst of trouble, God, make me have a pure heart that is a thankful heart. Lord, touch my heart. Touch my heart. Make my heart line up with your will. You see, God's will for our lives is not tied up in anything other than our heart. And as much as we push career, as much as we push education, the bottom line, God's will for your life is in your heart. You have to say, God, give me a pure heart. Keep me focused on being right with you, Lord. Give me a pure heart. God's will for my life is in my heart. It's in what I believe. It's in how I carry myself. It is in my heart. Daniel had a pure heart. He had a pure heart. He wasn't going to be contaminated by the food. He wasn't bothered by the changing of his name. He wasn't going to fight against the king because the king is trying to get him to do something. But the king began to like Daniel because Daniel could tell him his dreams. Let me tell you, God will give you favor if you got a pure heart. God will move on the king's heart if you have a pure heart. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hands of God. And like many rivers, God moves that heart to and fro. Pray that God moves upon your boss. If you're going to an interview, pray that God moves upon those who are making the decisions. Pray that God moves because when God moves, things happen in our favor. So you got to have a pure heart next point to you today, and I see it in the book of Daniel. Daniel. Daniel had a purposeful worship. He had a purposeful worship. He had a, a purposeful worship. He worshiped with a purpose. When we worship, we are aiming our prayers. We are aiming our thanksgiving. We are aiming all that we go through in worship. We are aiming it, aiming it at God. See, you got to hit the bullseye. When you go to the gun range, you want to make sure you shoot for the bullseye. You want to aim at the bullseye. Whether you're just playing or not, you want to make sure you leave out of your stall trying to hit the bullseye. When we get in touch with God, when we have worship unto God, we got to aim it at God. Don't get caught up in other stuff. Don't get distracted by other stuff. People talk about worshiping crystals. A piece of glass. They talk about worshiping a piece of glass. Don't you know that nothing exists on planet Earth without God? God placed it here, and now the creation has become more important than the creature. People worship their spouse. Oh, I just don't know what I'd do without him. Well, sooner or later, you're going to be without him. You better find out what you're going to do without him sooner or later, and you're going to find out what you're going to do without her sooner or later, because sooner or later, we're going to have to leave here. Sooner or later, we're going to be dismissed from this place. Sooner or later, we're going to be separated. And when we get to heaven, it doesn't matter who we were married to down here unless it's Jezebel or Jezebel-like. 
we have to make sure that we put our worship toward God. We can't worship our cars. We can't worship the games. We can't worship our thoughts. We cannot worship our education. We can't worship our careers because sooner or later it all will be gone. We can't worship our money. We got to have a purpose for worship, and we have come to this place to give our praises unto God. We got to worship him. That's why you can't concern yourself with who's sitting next to you when you're worshiping him. You ought to lose yourself in the service when you're worshiping him. You ought to bow down to him. You ought to lift your hands unto him. You ought to glorify him simply because you have a purpose for worship. And your purpose is to praise and thank the God who got you here. Your purpose is to thank God who made you who you are. Your purpose is to thank the God who allows your heart to beat to every bleat and pump blood to every extremity of your body. You got to thank him for being able to inhale and exhale. You got to thank the God who made you and who created you. He's God all by himself. We ought to have purposeful worship to him. The three Hebrew boys in Daniel did not bow down. Regardless of who's in office, when there is a contrast to what they believe and what your Bible says, you have to be purposeful worshiping God. Everybody got some, some little things wrong with them. Everybody got something going on about them. Everybody, No policymaker is right in all things. There is more to life than what this particular politician believed. I say to you, when I grew up, when I grew up and when most of you grew up, you honored the presidential office. President was somebody you can tell your children to look up to. The president was somebody who never called names and who never beat people down and never threw out racial slurs. When I grew up, the president was somebody we honored. What we got today? Lord, what, is, what, are, what are we even considering today? How is it at the point where we even have to make a decision today? The decision ought to already be made. We ought to have somebody that we can tell our children you can look up to. In every African-American home, especially Christian home, when you walked in the door, you saw a picture of three people up there. You saw a picture of Jesus that should not have been on the wall. Jesus says, God says, you should not have any graven image of me, but just for the sake of the conversation, you had a picture of Jesus there. You had a picture of Dr. Martin Luther King there. And you had a picture of Dr. John F. Kennedy there. Because we looked up to somebody that had some class that didn't put it on the front line, that didn't brag about his wrong. All of them do wrong. All of them are doing wrong, but he didn't front it in front of people and double dare you to deal with it. We have to watch who we worship because if we worship the wrong thing and the wrong person, in hell we will find ourselves. Let me just move on to point number two. Number four, look at how, I'm just looking at how you're looking at me. <laughs> uh, number four, when we put the right priority in place, we are protected by God. When we have our right priorities, when we have a prayerful life, when we have a pure heart, when we have a, a purposeful worship, God, we are protected by God. We're protected. When you look at verses 21 and 22, you will see the fact that God sent his angel and closed the mouths of the lions. Here's Daniel holding a meeting with the lions. Here's Daniel spending time with the lions. Here's Daniel being tossed and thrown into a lion's den, and lions were scheduled to pull him apart limb by limb, but when they went to look at Daniel, God protected him overnight. God kept him in the midst of all that was going on. The same lions that should have torn him apart, now these same lions are sitting around like little cats. Reverend W.T. T. T. Glim says it like this. He says, Daniel couldn't fight, but the lions couldn't bite. 
Daniel could not fight, but the lions couldn't fight. And when the king came to the lion's den, Daniel was still intact. I want to tell you today, if you walk with God, you can stay intact. If you totally depend on him and have a purposeful, a purposeful worship to him, then he will protect you. If you, you find yourself on the right side of God and not on the wrong side of God, God can protect you. He's our leader. He's our God. He's our sustainer. He's God all by himself. And I would not want to fall into the, the hands of an angry God. When you look, when you look at the text, when you look at the text, uh, Daniel says, God sent his angel. God has a way of dispatching angels because you is his, you are his precious merchandise. You're precious cargo. You know when a person is riding in a car and you see a sticker in the back of the car, it says baby on board. The reason why it says baby on board is said, don't hit me and my, my child is in the back of this car. What he's saying is, don't run into me simply because precious cargo is in this car. What he's saying is, uh, I want you to make sure that you understand that I'm protecting something that's important to me, and I hope it's important to you. He's saying, don't run from the cop because too many children are getting killed in car chases. Our children are dying. Children are not making it to be 15. Children are dying for some senseless reason that they are giving us, and then they think it's justifiable. Some guy get, decides to shoot in the air, some child dies. Some guy decides to ride along the road and just shoot up the place, some child dies. Somebody decides to run from the police, have an idea. Some child dies. We are losing our children, and I'm here to tell you, we got to put our hands in the hands of the master because if we don't put our hands in the hands of the master, it's only going to get worse. And we don't want to wait till it hits the New Beginning Church. We don't want to wait until it, it hits your household. We don't want to wait till it hits your family because all of us, all of us are susceptible to it. We don't want to wait to call a prayer meeting after somebody get hit. Somebody is suffering. We want to be in prayer before it happens. This place is called the House of Prayer. We call it NBC. We call it New Beginning. We call it New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church. We call it New Beginning Church. But at the end of the day, it ought to be the house of prayer. When people are down and out, they ought to be able to come to this place for prayer. When you are not making it, you ought to be able to come to this place for prayer. This ought to be the house of prayer. Jesus says that my house will be called the house of prayer. God has a way of protecting us. While we drive, and let me tell you, you, you need Jesus. <laughs> if you drive on the streets of Houston, if you walk on the streets of Houston, if you go to school in the schools of Houston, you need Jesus. Asked a woman the other day, man, asked a woman the other day, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? Man, you need Jesus to pump gas. You need Jesus to go to the grocery store. You need Jesus because it's a hot mess out here. You need Jesus regardless if you're at your house and choose not to go anywhere. The senior saints, the senior saints used to say, I'm not going out at the night because there's too much trouble out there. But now you can be in your house and trouble will kick down the door. You can be in your house and trouble will climb through the window. You can be in your house minding your own business and D ADT can't help you. Bricks can't help you. You Johnson Controls can't help you. But when it comes to Jesus, there are so many testimonies that tell you that he came in and I didn't know he was there. But while he was standing over me, God spoke a word and he protected me. God is able to protect us when we're not conscious enough to protect ourselves. Yeah, you need a prayerful life. You need a pure heart. You need a purposeful worship. 
You need protection by God. And finally, God promotes in the midst of chaos. God has a way of promoting us when the boss overlooks us. Young people just know that regardless of what the teacher says, regardless of what the principal says, regardless of what the superintendent says, you need to be prayerful because God is promoting on his terms. God, the Bible says that promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from God who is in heaven. You don't want some man to promote you, and you don't want people to pull strings for you because strings can be cut. You want God to promote you. When God puts your place, he opens doors that no man can close. He closes doors that no man can open. And he does things with us that we don't even think about. Promotion comes not from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from God. And when God promotes you, he does it in a way that no man can say they did. I mean, it's a miracle. It's a miracle going on around us that when God promotes us, he promotes us in a way that no man can pull us down. He promotes us in a way where no person can get credit. He promotes us in a way where it even amazes us of what God does for us. He, God, has given his son Jesus in order that we would be promoted. He gave his son Jesus that we could be promoted to the next level. We talk about stair stepping down here. We talk about next level blessings down here. But the ultimate level is to see Jesus. The ultimate level is to see the one who died for you. The ultimate promotion is to say, Jesus, I thank you for how you blessed me and how you kept me. Let me tell you, you can't even keep your mind. If I'm telling you now, you can't even keep your mind. You can't keep your mind. And if your mind is going to be kept, it's going to take Jesus to keep it. Are, are there any witnesses in here over 20? Are there any witnesses? And see, these days, you don't even have to be 20, and you can mess around, and your mind will be gone. If God doesn't protect you, if God doesn't promote you, if God doesn't keep you, your mind will be out of here. We'll be pushing you around. We'll be feeling, feeding you soup. I just pray that I do enough in these children's lives down here that when I can't do any more for myself, they will fight over coming to help me out. I'm looking forward to the day that, that one of them pushes the other side and says, this is my day. I'm going over to the old man's house. I, I'm going to make sure he gets fed. I'm going to take care of him. One of these days, somebody's going to have to take care of us if we keep living. Amen. President Jimmy Carter is 99 years old, almost 100 years old, and he's saying that he's just hanging on so he can vote for Kamala Harris. I said, he said, he's just hanging on. He's just, he, he knows that any day God can call his name. He knows that at any moment he can get out of here. He knows this Sunday school teacher, this peanut farmer, this former president, this one-term president, say he's just holding on so he can vote for Kamala Harris. I stopped by to tell you today, if God let me hold on, if God let me hold on, if God let me, if God let me hold on just a little while longer, I will give him the glory, I will give him the honor, and I will give him the praise. And I know it doesn't matter in my mind how long I hold on. It doesn't matter what my heart is set on, how long I hold on. It's up to God as to how long I hold on. You, every, the best day of your life, you're sick enough to get out of here. The best day of your life, you're sick enough to die. You don't have to have an ache or pain. You don't have to be able to slow down in your footsteps. You have to come to the conclusion that the sovereign God is in control. And because he's in control, I praise him and I worship him because I know he's in control. He didn't, I, I, I want to tell you today that the folks said that I wouldn't live to be 18 years old. Let me tell you, I had an afro and they said that I wouldn't live to be 18 years old. The folks said, the false prophets who had prophesied and said if that boy got a hole in his heart, he's not going to live to be 18 years old. But my mama yet held. 
held on. My daddy yet held on. And now I'm yet holding on. I'm telling you, I'm 61 today. That's a long way from 18. And I know because I'm still here, it doesn't matter what I have done. God has kept me. And because he's kept me, he's protected me, and he's promoted me. I'm not qualified to be here. I'm not qualified to be where I am. I'm not qualified to be standing before you. But it's God who has promoted me. And I thank him for who he is. He is God himself. He gave his only begotten son. His son is Jesus, the righteous lamb of God. His son is Jesus, the heart's pouring in the valley. His son is Jesus, the light bright and morning star. His son is Jesus that took a dogwood tree one day, climbed up Calvary Hill. He died on that hill, I tell you. They stretched him wide. They lifted him high. They dropped him low. His name is Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And as I walk through this life, I'm going to give him honor. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him glory because he's the one I depend on. I'm not holding on. He's yet holding on. And because he's holding on, I'm here today. And if I don't see you no more, that's all right. I made my reservation. I made my reservation some time ago. If, 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 if I don't see you anymore, don't worry about me down here. I'll be on the other side. Because on that third day morning, Jesus died, but he got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And I'm going to be on the other side, crying, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. That same lamb, the son of God, who was killed, who was murdered, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. They laid him in a borrowed tomb, but early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He was looking out for me. He was promoting me in the midst of chaos. There may be somebody here today who have not tried Jesus. This is your moment. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you never, ever tried Jesus, I challenge you to try him today. He will promote you in chaos. He will protect you in the lion's den. Jesus the Christ who gave his life for you. That same Jesus is coming back to get you. But you must be. You have to be. You got to be born again. One of these days we're going to catch life flight. It's the ultimate flight for life. We're going to leave planet earth and we're going to end up in heaven. But if you want to go, you need to know Jesus. You need to commit to him. Commit your soul to him. Commit your heart to him. Commit your body to him. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, would you just bow your head with me today and invite him into your life? It's a very simple thing. Just ask him to come into your life, believing that he's the Son of God who died on a cross who they laid in a tomb but rose from the dead. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, believing that Jesus is the Son of God who died for your sins and rose from the dead. We believe that you're saved. We believe that when Jesus come back to get his people, you will be included. And we're going on to heaven. And when we get over there, we have no more worries. We have hope in Jesus. There is, there's no turning back. I've decided. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I've decided. I've decided. Have you made that decision? Though no one joins me, you gotta go by yourself. I will follow. Come to the conclusion that we will follow Jesus. thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We praise the almighty, the powerful and the anointed God. We thank God for who he is. It is coming to him. I almost got it out. My, my, my. Well, I got a blue shirt at home that kind of looked like that. But it has University of Southern Mississippi on it. It's offering time. Amen. Uh, it is time to bring our offering and our gifts into the Lord. Uh, first impressions is coming with. you got
side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear. Side, please stand and follow first impressions from the rear. So you can send it to Zell. And our account for that is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. I'm the mix. Rapido. You too, Kevin. Oh, cool. Arely, rapido. We don't have all day. <laughs> rapido. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you listen because <laughs> we'll find out now. But we are back one more time for the You Focus. You know the rules, raise your hand after I finish the question, and the pastor person will go first, and Brother Alfred will do my honors. Okay, first question. Where did the scripture come from? Correct. Okay. That was pretty. All right. What's the title of the first point? What's the first point? Any of the adults want to answer? <laughs> the name. The name. That's correct. Um, how many times did 
the Daniel pray it then. Three. That's correct. Okay. What's the title of the second point? Crickets? Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on answers? The second point. The second point. The second point. Should we follow God's will? Can I start there? Yes. Okay. What's the title of the third point? The third Okay, okay, okay. Any of the thoughts? Purposeful worship. Who didn't bow down to the idol? Come on. We learned this in Sunday school, so. Uh, a hint, there were three boys. Oh, uh, <laughs> go. Meshach. Shaq. Shaq, man. <laughs> I need to take the microphone away from him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Good job, good job. Daniel, Daniel gets that one. I'm, I don't know where he got those names from. But it's okay, it's okay. What's the title of the fourth point? I'm going to stop doing the points with this one. <laughs> Any of the those want to answer? Yes, one's protected by God. Okay, and now what's the title of the last point? Adults. <laughs> Last point, what's the title? Yeah. Promoted in Kings. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we gonna have to find some new children. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Look who's talking. Next, next you spoke because I'm gonna call and he's gonna be sitting there. We'll see what he's talking about. <laughs> if you give him a little authority, brother Miles, what happened? <laughs> I forgot to give out the announcements, so I guess I will do them. Uh, first of all, we want to say happy birthday to the August people. And Brother Alfred, we're going to sing happy birthday to them today. So if you were born during the month of August, Brother Johnny Taylor, Sister Vane Irvin, uh, Gilbert Garza, Ruby Paz, Ashi Orr, Cora Woods, would you please stand at this time? Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. May God bless you. Next, we have our upcoming uh, events. For the month of August, we know that this has been Education Month all month. So the month of August has been dedicated to emphasizing the importance of education. So thank you for wearing your shirts. As you see, I'm wearing my shirt from where? Jackson State University. So thank you so much for wearing your shirts. And we want to say very special thanks to uh, Brother and Sister Whitlock for letting us know a little bit more about you. All right, so thank you all for a great presentation. I also want to thank the uh, New Beginning Youth. They performed this past Friday night. You all did not know that. But they performed at a youth function this past Friday night at First Missionary Baptist Church. So thank you, boys and girls, for doing a great job. And thank you, parents, for uh, bringing your youth. Also. We have robotics on Saturdays at NBC. Parents, get your children involved in robotics. That's where uh, the engineering stuff come from, right? I know a little something. 
All right, so get your children involved in robotics here on Saturdays. You can contact, contact Sister D. Wallace. We also have music for children on Friday nights, and that is going to start on September the 6th from 5 to 8. You can drop your children off at the New Beginning Church, and we will take really good care of them. Next, we have our New Beginning Church is going to celebrate 20 years of Pastor Davis being their pastor, or should I say our pastor. So we want to say congratulations to Pastor Davis, and that celebration is going to be Sunday, September the 8th at 10.30 a.m. We have a guest speaker, uh, Pastor Richard Booker from Kennelton Baptist Church, okay? I can't read it, I'm sorry. Next, we have Grandparents Day. Grandparents will, we will celebrate Grandparents Day on Sunday, September the 15th during our 10.30 a.m. service. So please invite your grandparents and your grandchildren to NBC, and we're going to take grandparents and grandchildren photos, you all. So make sure you have your, your people here. Uh, next, we will have, um, we're celebrating Family and Friends Day. Mark your calendars for Sunday, September 29th. We will welcome Pastor William Earl Reed and the Mississippi Delta Churches from Indianola, Mississippi to join us in celebrating Family and Friends Day during the 10.30 a.m. worship service. Each member is encouraged to invite five guests. Five guests. How many guests are we going to invite on that day? We're going to invite five guests on that day and we're going to have we're going to need volunteers to assist in the planning phase so all volunteers are asked to meet today uh, August 25th immediately after service and we're going to see Sister Cora Woods for that don't forget your bible listening and journaling tomorrow August 26th we will start week number 35 we're starting with Ephesians 2 through Philippians 1 let's continue to listen to God's word prayer requests we are praying for Lindsay Cotton, Lillian Darrington, the Johnson family, Leah William, Sandra Steptoe, Sydney Chua, Beverly Wallace, Patrice Caskey, Chad Warner, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeforth, Araya Carey Spencer, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Alvin Powell, Lula Richard, Vivian Oslaha, Paula Hornsby, Ed Brannon and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Labors for the Harvest, and World Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Davis. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God in heaven, we thank you now. God, we honor you, we praise you, we glorify you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for being good and being God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we honor you, Father God, for you are worthy. Lord, we know you as a great physician. Lord, we ask you to heal as only you can heal. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bind up wounds. Lord, we ask you, Father God, that the doctor would give good reports. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to do miracles in a way that no one else can. Lord, we know you, Father God, as the comforter. Lord, there is someone who is troubled. Lord, ease their pressure, ease their mind. Relax their hearts. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore, Father God, their health. Restore their confidence. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless them and look to you. Be their comfort and be their guide. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us and bless our lives, Father God, that our lives would be totally dependent on you. For we know, Father God, you're the best leader. Lord, we pray for world peace. We pray, Father God, that you control our atmosphere. We pray, Father God, that you give us peace 
even in these times of storms. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Create an atmosphere, Father God, around us that we will always give you the glory. All the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, that's our first time visitors to stand. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please stand. We'll ask our visitors to stand. Let us see you, speak to you, and, and get to know you. Sister Orr, will you tell us who our guests are today? Real loudly, please tell us. Sister Orr, will you tell us or introduce your guests for us? Sister Sandra Orr, will you introduce your guests to us, please? What's our daughter's name? Ashley. Ashley. Amen. Thank you all so much for visiting with us today. We enjoyed having you. Please consider coming back again, and we'll be glad that you have come. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Sister Orr, for, for your, your invitation. Amen. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Won't we stand to be dismissed? Let the church say. Let the church say. Let the church say. and business statement. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed. Everybody say